All right, Al, thanks a lot. We have summoned once again our great panel of dads to talk about guy time, male vanity, and the birds and the bees. Hal Runkle is a licensed marriage and family therapist and best-selling author of Scream Free Parenting. Terry Crews is an actor, former NFL star and the father of five. And Sam Sheridan is author of The Disaster Diaries, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Apocalypse. Fellas, welcome back. Good to see you all. Hey, all right. I want you to know I spent all week at Rooms to Go picking out this living room set for you guys. <laughs> Yes. I got the Wonderful. fake books, Sweet. the whole thing. It's good, man. This Smell the big. leather. This is going to be big. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's start with guy time. Okay, this is something most guys probably would like a little more of. There is a study out of Brigham Young University that actually shows now having great friends and long, strong relationships can help you actually live longer. In fact, relationships are as beneficial to your health as quitting smoking and exercise. Terry, I'll start with you. Married for more than 20 years. How do you do it? How do you make that balance between being with your family but keeping those friendships? Well, the big thing for me is that I have to let your family, you have to let your family know that your alone time or your guy time doesn't mean that you reject them. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest, biggest thing. Um, for me, like, I have my fortress of solitude and I have my time with my, with my boys and the whole thing, but I come back refreshed. And you got to give your wife that same yeah. you know, pleasure too. <clears throat> Uh, so as long as you can, you know, do both things with both people, it'll be, it'll be all good. But how there is a fine line between being sure. the guy who goes on a golf trip every weekend, right. or who goes to Vegas every couple of weeks, and getting quality time with your guys that you can balance with your family. So how do you walk that line? Well, here's the question you need to ask yourself. It's not only just that I'm not rejecting my family. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this guy time for their benefit. Right. right? I'm doing it as a right. retreat to help me be a better me. So that when I come back, and so I always ask and myself. And she buys that when you say that? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I'm going to lose it. It's Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask myself, is this, am I taking too much time? And also I'm checking with my wife. Right. Right. I'm just asking, hey, you know what? This is coming up. Because i got a regular date night with my guy friends, right? I can't believe I just called it a date night. But we do that yeah. once a week. But it, you know what? If I'm traveling a lot that week, eh, maybe not this week. Okay. Now, Sam, you said something interesting when we talked earlier. You said one of your New Year's resolutions was to drink more. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I ask you this in the context yes. of this question because it goes to, I need a vice. I need something outside my family. I think that's exactly right. You know, it's not really about booze. It's about, you know, finding time for yourself and having, you know, your guy friends. And, and uh, I think, you know, kind of reconnecting with your identity a little bit. It's easy to get kind of stuck in a, in a group think identity with yeah. you. You're worried about the kid. What's the kid want? What's the wife want all the time? And mm -hmm. out with your, your buddies, you're just worried about what you want to do and what's going on. And it's more of a, you know, self-identification thing. Terry, what if your wife comes to you and says, I don't like that crew you're hanging out with, or I don't mm, like that guy you're yeah. spending a lot of oh, time they're with. They're gone. Yep. You, you got to get rid of them, dude. That, really? That, that quickly? Can, oh, look, look. You cannot <laughs> have wow. that. that. No, really, know. really. I, because I it, it goes my way, too. If, if I see my wife hanging out with people, then I'm like, wait a minute. They're bringing you down. You know, There, there has to be some sort of approval <laughs> of who you're going to hang out with mm. and what you're going to do on your guy time. I, that's for real. Okay, let's move on to our next topic. We're talking now about the shift in gender roles. We're seeing this across the country and around the world. Dads now spending more time at home with the kids. Uh, the mother oftentimes is the breadwinner out. And this hits you, Sam, too. You say, particularly because your wife has a job that she keeps long hours. She works very hard. You do as well. But you've taken on the role of primary caregiver. Well, not all the time. I mean, she was a primary caregiver for most of my son's life. But occasionally, I have to step into that role. And it's really interesting, and it's very rewarding. And what's funny is it sort of connected me to my mother a little bit, kind of you know, mm -hmm. filling those same roles. Mm -hmm. And you know, I really don't feel like there's a stigma to it because I see it all the time. Even with because there's there's two people working. You know, even with lawyers, they're still doing a lot sure. of the the cross. Right. You know, it's it's you know, it's a modern world, man. Everything's How, different. Did your kids notice whether it's mom or dad at home, and do no. they care? You know, there's a business side to parenting, structure, right, discipline, right. and then there's a personal side to parenting. Well, great couples, great marriages have it where, and great parents where each parent is able to do both. A little bit of both. You don't want to lock in where you only do the nurturing, which is the traditional you know, right. feminine role, and you only do the masculine stuff. But Greg can do both. Terry, my wife and I have a rule that says no scorekeeping. So it's not, well, you were with them th this many hours today. Yeah. You, I'll be with them this many hours tomorrow. You just work together like you would with anything else. That's the thing. I mean, you know, we're, we're do, we do what our parents did. But sometimes what our parents did doesn't work. Like, you know, sometimes your father never told you he loved you. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And you gotta, you gotta sometimes reverse those roles, sure. do something different, and now you gotta share in everything. This is it's a new thing. I do the dishes, I do the cooking. It's not a problem. In fact, I'm, I, I'm a good cook. So 
you know, I in fact, it. it's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's sometimes if you operate in your strengths, it's best for the whole family. Okay, rapid fire here. We're going to come back for another segment. I want to get one more in here. Yeah. Eye parenting down the line. Do you allow your kids to use the iPad out at a restaurant to keep them yeah. occupied? Well, you got to put structure around that, man. That is like, it is a powerful, powerful tool. You got to put structure on their usage and content coming into your stuff, into your house. You have to do that. Okay, we're going to be right back. We got a lot more to talk about. And we're back with our panel of esteemed beefcakes, marriage and family therapist Hal Runkle, actor Terry Crews, and author Sam Sheridan. Let's pick up the second segment. Hal, I'm going to start with you talking about male vanity. There is science apparently behind the idea that a man feels his best. He's most proud of himself in the year after he has he and his wife have a child. What's the science there? Well, I think just validation your boys could swim. <laughs> right, you know, you create a new life, and so you feel, hey, well, but then it kind of sets in, like, oh, crud, now I got to provide, now I got to do lots of things. But the thing is, if you are not actively taking care of your body, taking care of grooming, right? I'm plucking, waxing stuff. Are you really? Home. Yeah, my number one goal is to still be attractive to my wife. You're right? a waxer? I've married, yeah, I've been married 20 years, right? Wow. And I, I'm a sex therapist, and so guys will say, well, I want to have set more sex. I'm like, look. If you're asking your wife to navigate your jungle in order to get close to you, dude, <laughs> wow. you know, you're asking way, way too much. Yeah. I'm telling you. Come on. Right? Yeah. Wow. With that, Terry, uh, <laughs> how do you keep it together? You're a fine-looking man. Hey, man, you know, the great Deion Sanders said, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, they pay good. <laughs> okay? And it's the truth. I mean, I find that the reactions that I get when I'm dressed like this or, my, or I feel fit, it's, it's just a different reaction yeah. from other people. And it's a, always a positive reaction, which makes it, which kind of bounce off into another positive reaction for me. So it's just a, it's a win-win for everybody. The great philosopher prime time. I yeah. like you invo <laughs> yes. invoking that. Invoking that. Thing. Thing. All right, come clean, man. What do you got? You're you know, I, I think, you know, I got to sit on the couch next to these guys. I got to look like an adult. You know what I mean? That was my problem coming today. So, you know, I, it is true. You got to, you know, you got to dress how you want to be perceived, you know, so that's a big part of it. All right. Let's talk now about the birds and the bees. There's a British survey out that says 95% of parents expect mom to be the one to have that conversation with the kids. Hal, how do you do it? It's not one conversation, man. Every wow. parent is a sex ed teacher. Whether you like it or not, you are teaching everything you're doing is teaching your kids about sexuality, how they see it. And like, like for instance, um, a couple weeks ago, my kids both had a sleepover, both my teenagers. And it was great that, you know what, when my son came home the next day, he was found that there were still clothes in the living room. And he was like, what's mom's underwear? Like, oh, guys, that's disgusting, uh. <laughs> right? You know? Which I think is great because they're teaching, hey, we've been married 20 years, we've got teenagers, but we're still going after it. Wow. Whoa. In the living room? Absolutely. I don't want to get too deep into this, I mean, but yeah, yeah. living room? Absolutely. Not with me, man. Terry, what about the age? Not Terry? Terry, you've got five kids. At yeah. what age do you start having those conversations? Uh, you you got to have it as soon as possible. I, I would put it, 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 when they start to ask the questions, yeah. you got to answer them. Yes. Um, my kids have walked in on us at times. You oh, know? Yeah. And it's uh, one of those things, where, and I have daughters, I have four daughters yeah, and then the oh, little son. Man. So when, it, you know, she's like, you know, you're hurting mommy. I'm like, no, oh, let's God. talk about this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you, and then you, and one thing is, I bring my wife in too because yeah. it just helps. Exactly. It yeah. just helps because yeah. they don't want to hear it from you. And at least with a woman there, it kind of breaks up some of the right. tension that's happening. And, it's you, crazy. and you made a good point. Moms should probably have these conversations with the daughters. Yeah, I do. I, right. I think moms and daughters and, and dads with sons because we know. You know, the male and, and with women, it's just hard. I just don't know everything. Sam, there is an instinct too for dad to say. Go ask your mother because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I got a four-year-old son, and we're in that place of like, is it the stork from Dumbo? You know, this baby's in mommy's tummy, so yeah. you know, I'm not there yet. Where yeah. you guys? No, are. no. Yeah. But I'm I think it's either. you know, it's uh, it's uh, like you, like these guys are saying, it's all about. I think it's going to be specific. You know, what question, what tone is a question coming, and that'll really dictate the answer. Guys, it's, always fun to have you guys together. Nice, Al, man. Terry, Sam, thanks so much. All right. Coming up next, 10 food tips to help you be a better cook. That's right after this.